this is just getting started. That's not to say everything's going to fall apart tomorrow. They, they may paper this over for a little bit, but in the months and years ahead, th this is going to look like a walk in the park, what we just saw in the last few weeks. Here at Liberty and Finance, we're licensed brokers with Miles Franklin. We are standing by the inventory, ready to make sure you get what you need, even into the wee hours of night and on weekends, because preparedness doesn't stop. Call us, 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. Hey everyone, this is Elijah K. Johnson with Liberty and Finance. And back with us today is our good friend Steve Penny from the SilverChartist.com. Our affiliate link with him is SilverChartistLiberty.com. We'll put that in the uh, description here. Steve, thank you so much for joining us today. You bet. Thanks for inviting me back, Elijah. It seems like the last handful of times we've spoken, the metals have been getting uh, taken to the woodshed. So it's nice to talk on a more of an upbeat note, at least when it comes to the metals markets. Definitely. I mean, we've seen the metals really skyrocket higher in the last three or four weeks here as we've seen cracks in the banking system. Um, I would like to discuss the major fundamentals that are driving precious metals right now. We have kind of two things going on um, on the fundamental side that we'd like to discuss the, today, the banking system as well as the petrodollar. And we're getting uh, news also from OPEC today, uh, major production uh, cuts that's causing oil to jump about 5%. So where would you like to start off today, Steve? Well, those are both two very important topics. And for years, I've said that there are two things that will accelerate the demise of this kind of uh, 40, 50 year experiment with debt based fiat money. And one is a rise in interest rates, and two would be some kind of uh, demise of the petrodollar system. So either of those are great starting points for me. So I guess it's uh, news today about OPEC cutting production here on oil. Does that tie in at all with the petrodollar? And we're also seeing a lot of movements last week away from, uh, you know, countries trading in the U.S. dollar for oil. Yeah, th there's a lot happening behind the scenes right now that I'm not sure uh, most investors really appreciate and that hasn't been priced into the markets. And just for by way of quick review, for those who may not be familiar, the petrodollar system started back in 1973 when Henry Kissinger went over to Saudi Arabia and brokered a deal where OPEC would only sell their oil in U.S. dollars. So now, of course, that created artificial demand, if you want to call it that, or global demand for, uh, for dollars. And in exchange, those dollars were cycled back into U.S. treasuries, thereby artificially suppressing interest rates here in the United States. Uh, some have called it the exorbitant privilege. We get to export our freshly printed currency units, and in return, um, you know, we, we get this demand for dollars. So, as that system begins to unfold, you know, that's going to have major, major, major implications for you know citizens of the United States and for demand for dollars. Now, I'm not saying the petrodollar system is going to implode tomorrow, but the trend is starting to shift away from the petrodollar system. We've seen just in the past few weeks, uh, China broker some kind of peace deal. Um, you know, it's not been fully signed yet, but between uh, Saudi Arabia and Iran, um, now we see, um, you know, Saudi Arabia openly talking about considering taking other currencies other than U.S. dollar for for their uh, for their oil. I mean, these are major major headlines that I don't think are being fully appreciated yet. And how that ties into this morning's announcement of uh, production cuts from OPEC, I, I haven't fully dug into that yet. It's fresh news. But I, I know it's part of the bigger picture that we should all be paying attention to. And, and this has major implications for the metals markets, too. And what are those implications uh, for the metals markets? Well, if the world needs less dollars, there's less global demand for U.S. dollars. You know, obviously, that's a, uh, you know, a headwind for the dollar. You'd expect the dollar to fall. Well, throughout history, silver and gold do a full accounting for the expansion of debt based fiat currency. And if dollars start to come back to the United States, I think it's Peter Schiff who called it like a reverse repo when this eventually happens. So, you know, dollars could come flooding back into the United States in exchange where, for our stuff leaving. You know, in other words, foreigners would begin to buy, uh, you know, the things that are here. So now we're, we're flooded with currency units and there's not as much stuff. So now you have even more currency chasing fewer and fewer goods here domestically. And of course, that's inflationary. And what, you know, what's the best hedge for uh, inflation? And that's silver and gold. They always have been and fully expect them to be this time. 
And it seems like people are rushing into silver and gold, at least a small percentage of people who are waking up to the cracks in the banking system. We've seen more demand ever uh, than ever here at Miles Franklin uh, for physical precious metals. We've seen the price uh, shoot up in the last few weeks. Your perspective on the issues we've seen in the banking system and how it's impacted the metals. Yeah, so a lot, a lot of ways we can go, directions we can go there. But you say a small percentage of people are waking up, and that's really all it takes because these are relatively small markets. I mean, obviously, gold is a much bigger market, but silver, you know, the, roughly a billion ounces produced slash recycled every year globally, and at twenty three dollars an ounce or twenty four dollars an ounce, you know, that's twenty four billion dollars a year globally. That's a tiny, tiny market. So just a small, uh, you know, a fraction of people start to say, hey, you know, what? I want a little bit of that. That can really have a mi- marked. Uh, impact on the price. So like you're saying, uh, demand has been through the roof the last few weeks. And I think we're just getting started. I think this is like a shot across the bow in the banking system. Interest rates in the last year have risen at a pace that is unprecedented. And this is at a time when governments around the world, chief among them, United States, is the most indebted and highly leveraged that they've ever been as you're raising interest rates. You know, we're sitting here with a 30 plus trillion dollar national debt. So every 1% rise in interest rates is another $300 billion of interest payments that taxpayers have to that have to be get paid every year. Um, so obviously the whole thing is unsustainable and there's going to be many more. Uh, you know, This is a shot across the bow. But th- this is just getting started. That's not to say everything's going to fall apart tomorrow. They, they may paper this over for a little bit, but in the months and years ahead, th- this is going to look like a walk in the park, what we just saw in the last few weeks. Now, it seems like there's a move out of smaller uh, banks to larger banks, and there's a move from uh, bank accounts to money markets. There's a lot of different moves that uh, it, you know people holding dollars in banks right now are making. Um, your perspective on all of that, it seems like maybe the bigger picture is that this probably means more inflation down the road uh, if more banks fail and they have to be essentially bailed out um, and deposit deposits have to be backed. Um, what are the risks that you see right now? And what are the actual concern? Why? What should people actually be concerned about right now? I guess uh, something I've been thinking about is, you know, diversifying my my risk. You know, do I, where do, do I want to keep my savings all in one bank? You know, keeping in mind those FDIC insured limits of 250,000, although I think they've showed their hand. You know, a lot of people up until prior to the last few weeks have said, well, you know, maybe kind of the Davos crowd wants a deflationary kind of uh, you know implosion, not to use too dramatic of words, so that they can kind of have it reset the game, reset the system. Well, you know, I, I've always thought they were going to bail it, bail it out, in, inflate until it, you know, until it collapses. Well, they've said we're they basically said we're going to bail out all the banks as this continues to happen and make depositors whole. So that's that's one. And then I think what people should be thinking about is you know diversifying. Where do you keep your savings? What do you keep your savings in? And I think it's woken up a lot of general investors, high net worth individuals, institutions saying, I'm not comfortable keeping this much cash in the bank. What are some alternatives? And people maybe who have never even thought about silver and gold before are all of a sudden saying, maybe I should look into this or get some exposure to physical metals stored outside of the banking system. And I think that's probably the, why you're seeing your phone ring off the hook for the past few weeks. People who've never, you, you, do you have any kind of anecdotal evidence about that? Like, are you getting calls from people maybe who are new to precious metals and they're just, they're kind of newbies just saying, Hey, I I want some to get some exposure to this. Yeah. I mean, we're definitely getting calls like that. And we're also getting calls from returning clients making much larger orders than normal. Um, getting a lot more money out of the bank. Um, so yeah, and definitely a whole lot more volume. The, the whole volume of orders is at least about three times what I've ever experienced. Um, and miles Franklin has never experienced anything like this. Um, but I guess when it comes to the what we're seeing in the spot price of metals, did you want to kind of share the screen for us? What are you seeing technically happen right now as we're seeing the price shoot up? Sure. And yeah, I'll go ahead and share my screen. And as I'm pulling it up, I'll mention to the listeners that I was, as I was mentioning to you before we hit record, you know, I, I personally wear two hats. I have a longer term investing hat where I'm speculating for the long term. And I'm not worried about all the wild volatility along the way. And then I take a smaller port of, part of my portfolio and I trade it. I buy and sell the swings. So we'll start here just talking big picture. And this is a 50-year chart of silver. And this is a beautiful, beautiful cup and handle pattern right here. And we're also 
forming this triangle pattern that goes back to the March 2020 lows. And look where we are right here. We're testing the upper rail of that resistance. And, you know, some a lot of gold and silver investors say, well, I don't pay attention to technicals. But that's fine. But the institutions do. The high net worth individuals do. So these patterns really matter. So a break above this downtrend line would be very significant because this downtrend line is held since um, uh, the silver squeeze pop on February 1st of 2021. And if we break above that downtrend line resistance, there's a very good chance we're going to run up towards 30. And once we get through 30, the next big resistance isn't really until about $50, 49 and change. Um, and I, I think we're eventually going to take out that, that high too. But for, for now, the targets are breaking above this downtrend line um, and then uh, eventually breaking above 30 and then 50. I could, I could also share a shorter term. So now I'm, I'm kind of putting on my trader hat as someone who plays the swings, right? So if you're, if you're not into that, then don't consider this like actionable information. But we have to acknowledge here on the daily chart that we're overbought, we're technically stretched, we're approaching resistance. So right there, when the RSI is above 70 and you're approaching a very clear resistance that's obvious, it's a caution signal. We're usually typically due for a sharp pullback. And you see the recent high here of 2478. We're coming right up to that level. And we've got this, this is called a bearish rise and wedge pattern. So typically, you know, if we fail at the lower edge of this support, you get a nice pullback. Um, I'm not sure we'll pull all the way back to this 200 day moving average. But if we did, if we did, that would be, I, I think, a one of the last like fantastic, fantastic buying opportunities until we see, you know, a, a bigger pullback from a much higher price. So that, that's what I'm looking for. Someone who's already got a full position, I'm hoping we get a, a nice pullback towards 21. Not sure it's going to happen, but if we do, I'm ready. And as for gold, what is your perspective on what is happening there? It seems like we're approaching 2000 once again here. I love gold. Uh, I like silver a lot better, though. It's it's hard for me to buy gold when I can buy silver for like 180th the price of gold. The gold silver ratio highly favors silver. And I think a lot of people conflate uh, volatility for risk. In other words, people say, well, silver is too risky for me. I personally think silver is less risky. It'll be much more volatile, but it's less risky because it's just so darn cheap. It's the only commodity on the planet that's trading less than where it was 50 years ago. And it's like half of where it was 50 years ago or 40 years ago in 1980. So um, I, I like gold. Gold is t uh, approaching a new all-time high. The all-time high was $2,089. And we're sitting here just above $2,000. On the shorter term here, this is a really nice daily candle. You got this kind of long wick down here. Still early in the day on trading here on Monday. But uh, the recent high was 2015. If we get above $2,015, the next stop will be um, a test of the all-time high up near $2,078 and $2,089. Now, on a technical level, I know on Friday, it was the end of the quarter, and I believe it was the highest gold ever uh, closed, had a quarterly close. Could you uh, confirm that for us? And is that significant on a technical uh, level? It was. It, it was significant. And uh, I don't want to overstate its significance, but it, I think the most significant part of it is that things like that catch the attention of generalists and institutions. And that's who we, you know, people like you and I, who we've been talking to for 10 years, we, we've been kind of dollar cost averaging, but we're not the ones who are going to really drive the price higher. We need new people to come in. So you hear things like new quarterly high, new monthly closing high, that kind of catches the attention of the more generalist investors. And that's what we need. So that's just another data point. And on the longer term chart here, I showed a longer term chart for silver. Here's one for gold. This one goes back uh, to 2008 and put it like that. This is another clear cup and handle pattern. And there's two ways to get a measured move target, they call it, price projection, once we break out above this $2,089 high. The more conservative way to be to take this kind of handle portion and flip it over. So that's uh, just almost, just over about $400. Let's call it $400. It's a little bit over $400. So once you break through two, 2089 add 400 that's about $2,500 gold. That's the conservative way to do it. Uh, the more aggressive way to do it would be to take this cup portion. And if you take 2089 and then the low down here was 1045 so let's call that $1,000. And you would add 1000 to 2089 So that gives you about $3,000 gold once we break through $2,089. And I think both of those are very, very reasonable targets over the intermediate term, let's call it that. 
Now you mentioned how short term for silver, it could definitely see a pullback. It seems a bit overbought right now for gold. Is it the same story? It is. Yeah. Um, not, not quite as overbought as silver, you know, silver had been uh, lagging behind gold and then boom, it just shot right up and played pretty rapid catch up over the longer term. It's got a lot of catch up to go, but it, it caught up pretty far, pretty quick here over the short term. So silver's a little bit more technically stretched. It's right up against resistance and it's got more of a bearish technical pattern. But it's I don't see like gold continuing to move higher and silver go down. They move in unison. It's just if there's a pullback across the sector, silver will probably get hit a little bit harder, which I think would be an opportunity. Definitely. And when it comes to also um, the other markets out there, for example, the stock market, people obviously who were investors who were in the stock market last year uh, were hit pretty hard the first year down in quite a while. Your take on what the where the stock market is right now um, and where we go from here. I mean, general equities are still historically overvalued. You can make a case that they're the most overvalued they've ever been fundamentally. But if if the Fed is going to pause here soon, I think it's possible, if not probable, that stocks continue to rally, maybe even test or even exceed their previous all-time highs before the next, I think, deflationary impulse, which is, could very well come later this year, and then stocks get obliterated. The risk-reward in stocks, to me, is not favorable at all right now for longer-term investors. I mean, you got tons of downside risk. Yeah, there's some upside potential there over the short term. But for me, uh, honestly, I look forward to the day when I can take some of my mining stock profits and just buy some general equities that pay a dividend. But you know, I think we're quite a ways away from that uh, right now, at least from a val fundamental valuation perspective. If our viewers are interested in looking over your shoulder of what you're investing in right now in the metal sector, they can go to silverchartistliberty.com. If they subscribe, uh, then they can you know, really see your whole portfolio. Did you wanna share with our viewers a bit about your service there? Sure, I'd love to, and thank, thanks for the opportunity to do that. Yeah, it's a fully transparent, over-the-shoulder service with real-time alerts. So I show members like exactly what I own, screenshots of my portfolio. Whenever I buy or sell, I send out an alert. And I don't claim to be perfect or even the best at this, but hopefully that transparency and sharing my thought process helps make our members better investors, better speculators. We've also got a great team of contributors, uh, Kyle Heineman, David Brady. I think he's about the best there is at you know forecasting these turning points in the metals. Uh, Jeff Clark contributes with mining stock analysis and then the community aspect too. It really is a tight knit group of people with our, you know, our, our mission statement is time freedom to pursue life's higher callings, things of eternal significance. That's kind of our rallying cry. You know, this is about more than making a bunch of money. You know, we want to, we want time freedom. That's the ultimate commodity to pursue things that really matter in life. And so a little bit long winded there, but that's our community. And I would love to have uh, your listeners join us over there. All right, well, we'll put the link in the description of this video. Any last thoughts before we let you go, Steve? No, thank you so much for having me back. Miles Franklin Precious Metals is one of America's oldest and most trusted bullion dealers. Miles Franklin is A-plus rated and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, licensed and bonded, and has zero complaints ever registered. Here at Liberty and Finance, we are licensed brokers with Miles Franklin. To order, simply call us. Discuss your needs and we can let you know our live inventory, prices and availability. And lock in your order over the phone. Once your order is locked, the price is held for you regardless of market fluctuations. And the metals are reserved for you awaiting your settled payment. Within one business day of ordering, you will receive an email invoice detailing the order and payment instructions. Miles Franklin accepts payments by bank wire, ACH or electronic check money order, check mailed priority mail, and cryptocurrency. The fastest forms of payment are bank wire and cryptocurrency. Upon settled payment, metals will ship out within three to five business days. You will receive tracking information via email. Domestic shipping charges are $15 for any order under 500 ounces of silver or 10 ounces of gold. For orders larger than that, domestic shipping is free. The package will be boxed, fully insured, and labeled discreetly with no indication of the contents inside. For your privacy, the name Miles Franklin will not even be on the package. To talk to myself, Kaiser, my brother Elijah, or my father Dunnigan, call 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237.